Okay, today is just a video on uh, driving in the winter. You know, we haven't had winter in a while, but we certainly do now. A couple of things to note. You can see here, I, I uh, as I mentioned before, I did have full self-drive. I'll do another video on the review on that. I don't have it anymore. My three months are up. I just have the standard autopilot again now, but I got to admit, I don't know how much I want to have it in the winter. So it says here, multiple cameras are blocked or blinded. Now, don't get me wrong, my car is quite dirty right now, but I feel that the view wouldn't be that good in the winter anyway. So uh, I don't know how much I would use the full self-drive in the winter. So for me, I, I, I do 100% like it, as we've seen the review, but I think I would la rather have it on, not the winter anyway. Okay, so driving this car in the winter. People talk about now, I don't have full kilometers here. I have uh, 389 on there right now in kilometers. And so that is what? 93% I didn't charge it last night so in the morning I always have it set program to leave at what time I go to work and therefore the car is warmed up when I leave it helps out a lot gives you the regenerative braking right away and obviously your interior your car is nice and warm also in the winter I switch it over to chill mode which is on controls and petting I have it on chill instead of standard this is the 2022 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive. Yeah, I definitely go with uh, the chill mode just, just because of the acceleration that this car has. It makes it a lot easier. But if you're able to see here, these roads are a mix of uh, plowed and, and unplowed roads. Uh, I don't have any real trouble driving. You know, typical like most cars, you know, for a rear wheel drive, it's a bit slippy, but uh, again, not a problem. Like. I've got winter tires on the car, so uh, that obviously helps with my driving. Like I said, I, I switched over to chill. I'll, we're, going, <coughs> we're gonna do a little traveling this weekend, so I'll do a travel video and show what the difference, try to show what the difference is in uh, the usage of the battery when, uh, how much degradation we get obviously for the winter. But I have mentioned before in other videos, and I'll say it again, my dad has a GMC truck it shows how much gas he has, or how much kilometers he has, based on his gas tank, and it also doesn't get as far mileage in the winter. And anybody who says that's not right is lying. Gas cars also lose due to heating the car, air conditioning, all factors all take gas, so whatever on that. Anyway, I have no problem driving this car in the winter. I actually find it really easy to drive take my time you know I'm not an idiot when it comes to driving in the winter but all in all I don't have any issues with this we've driven in some pretty big storms like I said I'll do a follow-up video and give you some examples of the how much kilometers it uses and I should have a bearing because it's a similar trip I've done before that I've probably done in the summer so I'll try to tell you what it comes out at I just did a another little video too showing that my door locked or froze so yesterday morning we went into the car opened the back rear passenger door it opened no problem uh, but when we tried to close it it wouldn't latch I called Tesla I tried to put a service call in but it was two days out for the mobile service and anyway the mobile tech got back to me and something like that is somewhere you'd have to go to the shop to fix I did call the shop and they had to book me an appointment for the next day, but I would have either had to drive with the door open or tie the door together, the guy said, and go to the shop. But I fixed it myself, uh, as per in the little short video. I just uh, closed the doors and ran the defrost mode twice on high, and then I went to under underground parking and uh, tried it, and it was fine, and I haven't had a problem with it since. And I did talk to a gas driving vehicle or two people that told me the exact same thing happened to them. One couldn't get into their car and another lady, same thing as me, uh, couldn't close her door afterwards. So it's not just a Tesla. Some of my favorite things about winter driving in a Tesla is the, well, one of my favorite things is the heating and air conditioning and everything like that. Uh, a lot of the European cars, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, they don't allow automatic starting on them. And I consider this to be a luxury vehicle. Some might not, but I do. So this is a luxury vehicle that you can have uh, the auto start, which is amazing from your phone, and you can have auto preheat the car or whatever. So a 
that's another good advantage to getting a Tesla over some other models of car, especially if you live in a colder climate. Some people say it's not good to have a Tesla in a colder climate, but I'm two years having this in this car, almost three winters, and I've, I haven't had any issues with it. So I think it's a great car to have in the winter. Obviously, you know, having a, a truck or something might be a bit better for traction, but as far as convenience for me and my commute, this is an amazing vehicle. Another good thing about having this car is the cameras in it. So whenever you get in an accident, you have to, you know, uh, at least in Canada, it's no fault insurance. So what happens is, you know, especially in situations where it's, it's hard to tell who was at fault, a lot of times it just becomes a 50-50 on the claim. But if you have camera footage, uh, like earlier when my wife got in an accident, it showed what happened. The truck drove into my wife. So, if, for example, here, um, if this guy stops and I slide into him, it's absolutely my fault. But if this guy over here, who's not there, Figment, merges over in front of me and cuts me off, then it's his fault because he cut me off, right? I got to prove that. Now, with the Tesla cameras, as soon as it gets in an accident, it records and it back records. Also, if you press here, it records the footage. And if you honk your horn, it records the footage. So as soon as, I guess, for an example, if you get an accident, Chandler's are, you might honk the horn. It's going to record the footage. So if you have footage showing that you didn't screw up and it wasn't your fault, it's going to benefit you big time when it comes to a claim. Auto insurance rates are really high right now. I did watch a show where it showed in America how high the insurance rates are on vehicles and Teslas. It was Nevada, I believe. Insurance in Ontario, anyway for a Tesla is not that high. I pay $2,000 a year for this car. Um, that's full coverage. It's about average for what I've been paying for all my other vehicles. Um, I don't have any issue. I don't find it more expensive. Whether that'll change or not, but all cars nowadays are expensive to fix. Uh, we have sensors in this car. All cars have sensors now. And if the sensors get damaged, they need to be repaired or replaced. As soon as the airbags go off, the car is probably a write-off, whether it's a Tesla, GMC, Ford, it doesn't matter. So parts are bad. For this year, as you can see by my last claim, it wasn't any worse than any other vehicle right now. So I believe that, you know, it might be a little bit more to drive a Tesla, but it's going to be a little bit more to drive a BMW or a little bit more to drive a Mercedes or SUV. If you're trying to compare this to driving, a, for example, Honda Civics are expensive here, but to a Nissan, for example, then yes, the Nissan is going to be cheaper, but I mean, it's not going to be that much cheaper. And to be honest, $2,000 isn't that bad for yearly insurance. That's full coverage, 2 million liability, collision and comprehensive with a $1,000 deductible. If it comes to winter driving, a lot of people point out the fact that what happens if you ever get stuck on a highway. But to be honest, if you put just your seat warmers on in this car and take most of the other things off, you could run this battery on just seat warmers for ages. You would not be cold, stuck in your car. You'd be a lot warmer than most people. You're also not polluting the earth or your motor because it's electric. So, like, really being, if I was going to be stuck in a vehicle, I'd want to be stuck in this one for sure. And just the same way, I'm going to tell you, anybody driving a gas car has to admit that they've come close because of a, an accident where they knew the gas station was just right up ahead to being close to being out of fuel so you could absolutely run out of fuel. And what are you going to do then? You know, so electric vehicle, you don't have to worry about it. You just run off the battery, you put it in economy mode, just like when your phone runs out of batteries. Say you have an iPhone, you put it into eco mode, it shuts down and uses the minimum amount of battery. You can extend your phone by like five to six hours by doing that. The Tesla does the same thing. Climate control in the winter is also amazing because in this car you also got rear heated seats for the kids, even up to the middle you can put those on, different modes here, uh, all off there by pressing that. You can control, it's got the dual climate which most cars have now which is what I love, I think it's great for that. Right now because it's just me in here it's only running my side of the car, heating up my area. If I needed to save some battery, all I would do is lower the heat and like I said, put the car seats on so you can have uh, a more economic drive. There is always ways to save money or to save on your kilometers used when you're traveling in the winter. 
same as any vehicle. All you do is cut your heat down a little bit. I have a jacket on anyway. I'm not going somewhere in the winter without it. Number two, you can just like run off your heated seats. Three is just make sure you run at a lower speed. Don't fly along the highway, which you shouldn't be doing in the winter at 140 kilometers an hour or whatever that would be in miles. If the lower you drive, the lower your speed, drop it down to 110, you know, it's gonna save you a lot of uh, electricity on the, the, the drive, so there's always things you can do. Anyways, please like and subscribe and follow for more videos. Like I said, I've got a few more coming up in the next couple of days.